I'm going to make an ultrasonic cleaner for uh, vinyl records. Um, I know there's a lot of these already on the YouTube, but uh, I'm going to show you step by step how to do it as cheap as possible. Um, first of all, you can buy an ultrasonic tank. They're very cheap on eBay. This one's about £85, including postage. You just need one that the record will fit in, so there's no no point in buying one very large unless you want to. The la it's just got the water levels just got to come up to the uh, label, and the that's how high the water level goes. And uh, this one, a lot of people have used, is the right depth. Now, I'm going to use this rod. It's a seven millimeter diameter piece of brass. You can also get it in steel and possibly uh, plastic. I couldn't get it in aluminium at seven mil, so but the brass is nice. It's just about the right size for the record, and it's going to hold the record like that. Now I'll just show you a few notes on how we're going to do it. I'm going to suspend the shaft above the with the record that's going to go in it above the tank and I'm going to use two little uh, supports either side it's going to be like that the support just screwed together I'm going to make it out of plastic I'll show you in a minute we cut a little slot for the the bar to rest in both sides and then I'm going to fit a little motor on one side coupled with a rubber tube and I'm going to show you how to do that and it's all going to be pretty simple. The only tools you're going to need are probably a drill and a saw, plus the materials. I bought some polypropylene, this is 6 mils, very cheap on eBay. It's, these were already cut size but we're going to cut some more. What I'm going to do is make the supports like this, one either side, cut it to size and join it in the middle by a little block like this. I'm going to have to cut, that's going to be quite difficult to cut for you. You need a decent saw or something. Uh, and then just screw them together. And then that's, when it's screwed together, it's going to just rest on the side of the tank, one, one each side. As I said, you got the the support rod and that we'll cut a V in the top of that it's just so that it can rotate without falling off now um, how to rotate it well here's a motor you can buy on eBay this costs about eight pound fifty including post you get different rotational speeds this is a three rep a minute you can get them slower and quicker it's 12 volts so um, a little cheap 12 volt power supply which uh, is going to run this. You obviously got to solder the wires on. And what I'm going to do is um, mount this onto one of, one of these plastic things. It's got little two little screw holes and that's going to go round and round and we're going to mount that on the back down here like this and uh, again we're going to have a bit of block there and another one of these pieces inside to support it all. And um, the shaft is going to go across like that. It's going to rest in, rest in the V cut out in the one on the front. And we're going to couple these together to make it nice and easy to join it together. I've bought this little piece of tubing. This is just a rubber tubing, um, not reinforced, so it's nice and flexible. This is a six millimeter hole, which means it's going to be nice and tight when you push that in. So it's going to be very easy to just push that in on there. And I'm going to cut a piece off. I'm going to glue it. This is unfortunately only six mil, so it's a bit loose. But um, we can glue it on there or fit up, 
put a little bit of heat shrink or something around there so it's tight and, a little, and it can stick out. We cut a piece off and then we just slide it in and that's going to rotate the shaft. So all very simple, nothing complicated. The only difficult bit is going to be sawing these little blocks just and drilling a couple of holes, two screws, just to screw it all together. Um, the record, how do you hold the record on the shaft? Well, you can buy uh, these rubber hockey pucks. They're very cheap, a couple of pounds each. They're made of rubber, there's no hole, but we're going to drill a hole in the middle. I'll experiment with the hole. Now these are solid, don't buy the cheap practice ones, which some of them can be hollow and some can be smaller in diameter. I'm going to drill a hole in the middle, an experiment. Uh, hopefully I can get a hole so it's just an interference fit. So you can put the record on and then you can slide this down one either side and hold it in place. It won't need much pressure because the record is balanced, so it's going to go around very easily. And if you want to put more than one record on, you can also buy these uh, little soft pads. They're um, mini foam pucks. We can drill a hole in them and we could use it to space out one record, put another record, and perhaps up to three. I'm not keen on putting more than three in. I've seen people putting 12 in, but the, the action refers... Uh, works by cavitation and the agitation of the of the bubbles against the record surface and if you've got them at only a couple of millimeters apart I can't see how the um, agitation of the water is going to be is going to be quite restricted between all the records because it's um, I don't know exactly how far the ultrasonic can penetrate when you've got objects in there but I would suggest having a, a one to three with at least a decent gap between the records so the water between them can actually agitate. Anyway, that's up to you to decide. So, some cheap polypropylene. Don't buy perspex or acrylic because cutting it, it, it can crack and, and look horrible. You want uh, something like this. Um, you fill it up with some deionized Water, this is also demineralized, which means it's been passed through a filter and it's got no uh, particles of any minerals in there. Um, just deionized water it is very cheap, but I uh, demineralized as well. These were about two pounds something for five liters. I think they were post free as well. You can also buy it in, in super stores, but um, I don't know whether the ones for topping up batches is just been demineralized or not. A couple of other things. I've got tiny little clamps, seven mil, just in case I need to um, fix anything in position to stop it moving. I might, could put it behind one of these. I don't know. They were dirt cheap, so I bought a couple anyway. Um, got a filter. When you drain out the water, uh, it back into the container. Uh, you put a coffee filter in here or something just to catch any dirt. And it's important um, to clean the water after so many goes. Um, I've also got uh, some record cleaner liquid. I don't know if it's necessary. Uh, I would assume water would be fine. I mean, it's only the agitation that works. Uh, some people put a little bit of this in as well, and some people put in um, uh, some wetting compounds. I'm not sure if wetting liquids like Kodak, uh, Photo Flow or something. I'm not sure if that's necessary. Anyway, pretty cheap. All these materials are cheap. I'm going to cut these up. Once I've worked out the approximate height, it doesn't have to go all the way down to the bottom. It's just going to... It's just going to hang on the top. There's a slight recess on the lid here, so I can put them. Um, if it flops around, you can just put a little bit of rubber or something behind it. We'll do that after I've cut it. So, 
Um, that's the materials, cheap. And uh, I'll show you as I cut all this up, um, step by step. Right, I've cut up uh, a couple of those sides like that out of out of a long the long piece uh, just for the hacksaw and I've cut the middle part out of the block that was a bit harder I mean if you've got a surplus saw or something it's much easier I use a hacksaw which is a bit of labour intensive but anyway um, I've joined them together uh, put a couple of screws in each side and now uh, fits in on the side like that. Um, I worked out the height of the bar is going to be somewhere just below the top of this one. So um, when it's in there, I can cut a groove in that. As you can see, it rocks a bit, so you can get a piece of rubber draft proofing strip or or some. I've got a piece of rubber which can be stuck on, on the inside so when it goes down it can just um, stop it stop it rattling around so that's one now the one on the other side obviously has to hold the motor which is going to be um, have to be at the same height as the other one so I've just got to make like another one of these and uh, dismount the motor uh, on it just so that the shafts at the same height um, and then that one will go on this side with the motor on it um, and a bit of rubber tubing will go on there and uh, it should we should be able to just rest it on there and push it in. I've made up the second one that goes on this side now and um, just checking the height before I'm going to have to put grooves in. If you've cut these uh, too low you can always pack it up a bit. Um, just checking the record. Uh, it doesn't hit the sides which it doesn't. So um, all I have to do now is uh, work out how to fit the uh, the motor on. I'm going to have to probably put adjustable slots in for the motor so that it can be just moved up or down just to the right place. And as I said before, these can be uh, have little rubber strips if necessary to stop them moving. I've drilled holes in these um, rubber pucks and in these little uh, space of soft squeezy ones um, carefully using uh, a range of drills I found that for these um, with this seven millimeter diameter uh, I've made one quite tight which is going to be permanently on one end um, by drilling it uh, about seven and a half but leaving one one part about only seven so it just is tight and that that can push on there like so and then you'll position that depending on uh, where it's going to go and then you've got the uh, I cut a little bit of that rubber tubing as well um, which is going to be the coupling and that, that fits that's going to fit on the end as well like that and then um, these uh, can be spaces. I've just drilled them with a 7mm hole. They're quite soft. Uh, I've done three, which means you could hold um, one, two, three, or even four. I don't know if it, there are four records to go on there. They might. And then this this puck, I've um, found that... Uh, because it's it's so tight when you're drilling it out, uh, I've drilled it seven and a half mil, and it's still quite tight to push on. Just show pushing that on. It's quite um, an interference fit, but not so tight that you can't move it. So hopefully that's going to be right. 
if yours is too loose if you do it too loose either do another one or um i don't know how tight it has to be but as i say the record when it rotates uh it's balanced so it's not like it's um having to raise a heavy weight up or anything so um that shaft is a bit long but i'm gonna have to i cut it to shape here's a record so the record will go on like that now it doesn't uh, fully cover the label I'm not worried about the labels. I found that um, water, I've never found the labor affected by water anyway. And the amount of water that comes off here as it's rotating really slowly, I, I think is minimal. Anyway, I'm not sure even if any actually, as it comes up, it drains off anyway. But if you're worried about that, you'll have to arrange. Um, I did think of getting like a cork placemat or something. But if there's any gap, it's going to get under it anyway. So let's just try it. So that that's one goes on. You can push this down all the way down to there. Now it doesn't have to be very tight, I don't think, because um, as you turn it by hand, which I am there, as you can see, the record turns no problem. So I don't see that we're going to need to clamp anything on. Let's just pull that one off. As I say, this rod can be cut to length when it's done, let's try the spacer. Um, I've got another record pound. I've got a, uh, got a single here. Put on. Let's try a single. So that goes on there. And as I say, you could even put a, if you, another one. Let's put the space this on. Let's push it down. There would be another, say, another record there, but I'll put one on. Um, and again, as you can see, just the pressure, pressure from the sides is making it rotate without any problem. And that eventually is going to be resting in uh, some grooves. And uh, we're going to mount the motor on the back. And as you can see, they're going to rotate. I'm not sure if the single is going to be goes down far enough, but um, it's quite convenient. You can hold this puck with your hand, and as long as it's nice and tight, which mine is, um, this this one is looser, and it just slides off. It's tight, but I mean, it's got to be tight. And this bar is very long <laughs> and you can take that off uh, you you probably be wearing a white glove after you clean it so you don't get fingerprints and there's a space so you take off and as I say the record so it's fairly easy um, to hold it and uh, it looks like it's going to work quite well and why I've got the video on here, I'll just uh, show you a couple of things I've also done. Let's zoom out a little bit. On these uprights. Now, uh, this upright here that holds the motor, you're going to have to arrange it so that it's um, vertical because you don't want the shaft uh, pointing up or down because when you've got the rubber coupling on, this coupling, uh, you don't want it um, straining up and down like that. But you can do that just with some little rubber inserts or something. Uh, this one, as I said before, because it's loose, depending on what material you use and how tight it gets, the shape of this has got a lip underneath and there's also a bit sticking out inside where they shape the tank. So you're going to have to arrange how you cut all this. Um, it didn't take me long to do, it won't take you too long. It depends how particularly how fussy you are and I've just stuck a bit of rubber on there as you can see and also st stuck a tiny bit on there just so that it goes on like that and it's um, nice doesn't flop around and it comes off very easy too and this one's the same I've got a bit of rubber on there a little bit of rubber on the inside 
and uh, if it's if it's um, check it's vertical so the next job is going to um, do this now um, on here zoom in a little bit for you uh, because the tubing I lost a bit that little bit of tube in there that we're going to oops sorry where's the uh, camera a bit of tubing that is going to link these two together because it's a, a six mil shaft what I've done I've I've heat shrunk a couple of bits of heat shrink on there but you may not have any um, alternatively you can glue it on something if just so that it um, well it's going to be fixed on there and this part's going to be glued on anyway so that you can pull when you pull this off uh, this is going to stay on the motor when we've done it so it's going to be easy to just uh, slide that in like that and then that will rest when it's done properly and then that will rotate so that's just um, I'll look at this again later that's um, going to have to be glued on I've um, cut some V in this block and uh, the other block which rests the tube in it. It's um, very slippery so it's only to stop it moving around and also you can set the height. You might have to fiddle around with the depth of this V and I might adjust it. I've done it so the record is as low as possible without touching the sides. So it depends on how you cut and measure everything. But that's um, I drilled that and then uh, chamfered it out. And uh, same on this side. Now this side I've done some more work. Not only cut the V, but I've mounted the motor now. So I've cut the... Um, the V and I drilled all the way through and then through the back plate so they were in line and then I reamed out the hole with um, uh, a, a reamer, a stepped reamer which cut the plastic nicely and I reamed it out bigger than the uh, tube so it's not going to bind up and then um, the motor has four fixing screws the two on this side I couldn't uh, get to, uh, they're behind this block, but the two on the top are fine. So I worked out where they would be positioned by um, making sure that this is in line. And uh, I drilled the hole slightly bigger so that I could uh, move the motor around a little bit. And if it doesn't line up, just enlarge the holes a bit more. And then I've tightened them up. Make sure, this is three millimeter uh, thread. Make sure your screws aren't too long because it's um, not very deep and you don't want it to bottom out and then you'll tighten it up and strip the threads out. So make sure that the screw is the right length. They don't give you any, but it's got to get, be a uh, pass uh, through here and into there. So check that first before you tighten them up and, and strip it out. And uh, make the hole slightly bigger so you can move the motor around a little bit until it's exactly in line, which this one is. It's in line that way and it's in line from the side when it's um, resting in the slot. Obviously it goes on the... Uh, on here. And it can slide a bit left and right. It's quite tight, but you can you need to get it in the middle. Uh, we'll do that when we got the record on it, and then you can mark, put a little mark or something uh, where it can be. And this one on this side will line up as well. You don't want the shaft at an angle. You want it dead straight, and it's going to go in like that. And you see it turns very easily. Uh, low friction polyprop and it's lined up there and with the with the coupling when we wire the motor up it should turn this round without any problem at all 
You need a power supply for the electric motor to make it go round. This is a 12 volt one. Uh, you need to be able to solder a couple of wires on because uh, it's got two little tags. Doesn't matter which way, plus or minus, it go clockwise or anti clockwise. Uh, 12 volts. Um, you can buy 12 volt uh, DC, not AC, uh, power supplies pretty cheap. Or oh, I had this neck gear router one knocking around uh, from an old router, 12 volts, 1 amps. Uh, one amp is easy enough, uh, probably only draws about 0.1 of an amp when it's working. So um, the cheapest one you can buy, they're pretty cheap. Now it will come with some sort of um, connector on the end which probably would be a plug and you won't have a socket. Uh, you, can, you can either try and get a socket, you could uh, solder it direct to the terminals. Um, which I didn't really want to do in case... You put when you put it away, it gets caught and rips the terminals off or something. Uh, you could wire in a switch, buy a cheap switch and on off switch and wire it to that maybe and just wire it round. Uh, but you'll have to do something to be able to connect it to there to there. Now, this is a 3 RPM one, uh, let's just plug it in. Plug it into the socket I've wired up. And it started going around. Now, um, it looks a bit fast, 3 RPM. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I suppose, because if you how many minutes you leave it on, the record's going to be in uh, and out the water. Same number as if it was moving slowly as quickly. I don't know whether the agitation effect needs to build up on the surface. This is a 3 RPM one, we'll see how it goes. You can get 2 and even 1 RPM one if it's really slow. This is going clockwise. If you wired it the other way around, the clockwise it won't make any difference whatsoever. I've cut the piece of rubber to length so it just doesn't rub on the front plate. And I've glued it onto the shaft. So that it's uh, it's held on the shaft and lined up the motor and screwed it on so the shaft's in line with the, the slot. Um, so that uh, rubber piece, as I said before, now will just um, enable the end of the shaft to just push in, and it's just doesn't go in very far, but it's enough to grip it. And it pulls out easily as well. And so um, the next thing uh, to do, I guess, uh, is just cut this shaft, which is too long. I'm just going to cut the end off now. Because, let's just put this on for you. Um, fits on like that. The shaft goes in there, just pushes it on. And you can see it only needs to be that long. I've cut the shaft to length, so it's just going to be this right. So let's uh, try it. We'll get um, some records. Try it. Uh, I'm going to put a whole bunch on. I said. I could do three, but I think um, I think I've managed four. Just using these soft uh, pucks, which cost very little in between, just to space it out so there's a reasonable gap between the records, as you can see, give enough room for the water to do its job. And then the final one, which is just a, just a sliding, uh, reasonable fit, uh, can push that on until it squeezes them down. So the one on the back uh, is the tight one. It's not going to move. I've fitted it in about the position you want it. It's nice and tight. Then we lower it on uh, and just push it into the little sleeve. and rest it in like that. 
Now, um, I can adjust the one on the back to move them this way or that and check that they don't rub on the sides. You can, you can just move these left or right as necessary so that they're not rubbing. Just move that one a tiny bit. And it's uh, all ready to go. Now the water height, when you fill it up, uh, you can fill it up so it just comes to the bottom of the label, which should be uh, near the top. I'm not sure. It's got a like a little um, step, which is probably where the water surface should be. But so as long as the water is just below there, there's no water in at the moment. I'm not going to put side it up, but we're going to check if it goes round. So this is plugged in. We're going to plug in the motor at the back. And we have some rotation. As you can see. Now it's reasonably fast. You can see the couple in there. Might be too fast. That's three RPM. You can buy two RPM might have been a bit better. The motors were only, I think, they're eight pound fifty. Uh, the geared motor, including posts, so I can. I could buy another one if you do, if you buy it. You might want to buy the two or the one RPM. Then we put in the water. Obviously, making sure you switch it off. Uh, close the valve. Because five liters is going to bring it right up to the near the top. So. Supposed to be at six and a half litres, but seems to be slightly less. So I don't know how high you're supposed to take it, but we want it to cover the label. So what I can do is now fit this in and see how high it is. Well, that has come right up to the edge of the label. You can't quite see it, but uh, it's right up to the bottom of the label, which is it was fine. Um, so now we can plug in the motor. It's already going round. And plug in the machine. I'm going to turn it on at the back and set the timer. Now I'm not going to heat the water either. Um, we know that heating the water will increase the agitation, but um, if you're if it's warm enough, about 20 degrees C in here, I think that'd be okay. Now we can do that test later. Oh, it's not too bad. You can see some agitation on the water surface. Well, I've switched it on, I've put it on the five minute timer, turned it on. You can see some agitation in the bottom, particularly at this point here. There's supposed to be three transducers in here, and there's three sort of in, indents in the bottom, obviously, where they're fixed. There's one, two, three. That one seems to be. And uh, the surface of the record, well, it's, you can see the wetness on it as it's going round. Now some of these marks, um, like there, it'd be interesting to see if they disappear or not. And whether they have to really remain in the water longer. And this thing might be going round too fast. So if it doesn't work... Um, Try it for longer. This is a five minute time, and uh, if the water doesn't clean it up properly, we can try some additive as well. So, I'm going to add a bit of this um, record cleaning liquid into the pure water. 
see if it will uh, get any of those final marks off. I did find that I could remove those marks by the normal method of using some uh, uh, liquid and um, like a camel brush and just rubbing it and uh, it did come off so that wasn't very good that the ultrasonic cleaner didn't remove that. Anyway, I'm going to add some of this. I don't know how much you're supposed to put in, but um, it's very expensive. But we've put um, a whole uh, uh, cap full in and see if it makes any difference at all. Um, there's still a few marks on this record, and if it gets rid of them, uh, we'll try another record. Um, so I'll put it on for about another 10 minutes. First thing I notice after putting some of this um, cleaner in the cap full is that the record now is completely and utterly coated in uh, water. Before the water was just in patches obviously where the grease uh, was making it run off. So this has enabled the water to completely um, cover the entire record, which must be a good thing. And um, hopefully it's going to give a better finish. Okay, after a, a little experimentation, checking a few records, etc., uh, I found that running the um, this at a much slower speed is better, leaving them in the water longer. And so, actually, I did this by just using a different power supply, only um, three volts. That's all it needs, even though it's a 12 volt uh, motor. Three volts still add enough torque to turn it, and it goes around much slower. Um, also, I've heated the water up to 40 degrees C to try and improve uh, the scrubbing action. And I find that you do need to leave it in quite a long time, uh, 15 minutes. Um, also, the number of records you can put in, you can see the water surface agitating where the ultrasonic uh, agitation is working. And if you put even three records in, in between, you'd hardly get any agitation at all. And uh, one is best, One you, and you put the record in the middle, you get maximum agitation both sides. With two, spreading it out, you still get some action in between. It seems to be more on the outsides, but still in between, so I don't really plan on doing more than two records at a time. The other thing is the drying. I found putting them on the rack and letting them air dry to absolutely ages. Um, but I did find that I could dry them on here, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, by very slowing this down, the vacuum didn't work very well, uh, but this homemade one didn't. Uh, but I, by turning the record, I did find that I could blow dry them with this uh, blaster uh, for drying bikes. It gives a good blast of air, and... Um, I rotate it on here, I'll show you in a minute, and blast it off with that. Uh, does it blast any air, dust, etc. on it? I doubt if it's um, enough air, dust in the air to cause any problems. It dries it off pretty quickly. Um, leaving it on a rack to dry seems to take ages and ages. And also, you don't, you don't want to scratch the record by accident. Just coming up to the end of the 15 minute cleaning cycle. It's off. So now, um, all I need to do now is, uh, is just turn the motor off. It's got the plug. I'm going to take it out. Now, um, comes out very easily. Shake off any excess water. Now, some people uh, put them on drying racks, just let them dry naturally. Uh, some say you can dab them off on paper towels. But I've got um, a, a blower, which I'm going to show you, to blow dry. And 
Now I blow dry uh, the records. I find that um, it doesn't uh, do any harm. It doesn't really blast dirt from the atmosphere on it or uh, cause any other problems and it's very quick. Uh, I've got this uh, high power uh, blower which is used for cleaning motorbikes normally and um, I've got this old homemade uh, vacuum cleaner which didn't work very well but it's a way of holding the record. If you're going to blow dry you've got to um, f use an old record player or way of <laughs> keeping the record from blowing around because this is very powerful. It doesn't have to go around. Uh, you can just blow it off um, as it's stationary and then uh, but mine can actually go around as well. Anyway uh, I'll just show you how it blows all the water off. Turn this on, it's a bit noisy. Also rotate mine as well, so that way or the other way. Anyway, I'll do that, and I can uh, I can turn it over and do the other side, and just uh, blast off any remaining water. After doing uh, testing, trying to clean the records various uh, ways, um, the conclusion is that um, you definitely need some uh, something in the water to uh, wet the surface of the records, such as Kodak uh, Photo Flow, or um, I used uh, uh, this a rather expensive uh, record cleaning liquid. Uh, put about a cup, cap full. Uh, the other thing is, uh, heating the water does help. Uh, 40 degrees centigrade uh, seems uh, warm enough. It does help the agitation and um, the cleaning. Uh, another point is that um, these tanks, I don't know if they're really strong enough. Uh, they're cheap. Uh, they're three transducers. But uh, the depth, the strength of cleaning uh, is just about, I don't know. Uh, so I suggest only one record at a time for maximum agitation on the record. Uh, two if, if they're spaced out and three about max. After that, the agitation in between the records seems to be uh, minimized. So if you've got time, just uh, one, I reckon. Now, the speed of rotation... Because um, the record is only uh, about a third of the record is in most at any one time. That means um, if you put it on for uh, 15 minutes, then each part of the record will be immersed for five minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, I don't reckon uh, less is worth it. Uh, longer the better. Uh, just um, keep on uh, letting it clean. So uh, 15 minutes... And the rotational speed, um, the slower the better really. I did start off at three revs. I'm down to uh, less than one now. And uh, it enables the record that is immersed to have some time uh, to get some agitation going on it rather than it being in and out quickly. So um, these motors are cheap. You can buy a 0.6 RPM 12 volt one. Also you can run them on lower voltage. Uh, this is a 12 volt one. I'm only running at 3 volts. Uh, I bought a, um, a cheap brick, or I already have one of these cheap brick uh, ones with variable voltage on them that goes right from one up to higher with a little uh, uh, clicker, a little adjuster clicker on the back. Uh, direction of rotation, I don't think it matters. I put a, um, you can put a switch, I just put a little plug that you can plug it into. As I said, a cheap depth of immersion mug. Make sure it comes up to the edge of the label. I don't. The water doesn't seem to affect the labels whatsoever. They don't seem to stain them or make them come off. And um, 
Uh, these will come up cheap. You can make them a bit narrow. I think they're a bit wide, but it was cheap. Um, you could probably go half that width and it'd still be fine. Anyway, um, that's my observation. Um, and I'll, I've got a record that I'm going to uh, put in now and see the difference it makes. I found the best way to get your records clean when using the ultrasonic bath cleaners first to do a pre uh, clean uh, and I use um, this brush Not point oh one millimeter slim tip bristles. Uh, it's very soft, and I use uh, something like this into the groove uh, vinyl cleaner, or you can make up your own or anything you like. And what I do is uh, spray it onto the record, uh, or you can wipe it on or whatever uh, using a pad. This one's getting a bit empty. <laughs> and then I just rotate the record and using the micro bristles just, just works it into the groove and this will get help the ultrasonic cleaner uh, get right into the grooves it's already uh, will get in and start loosening any dirt if it's not if the one you're using uh, is not wet, wet enough just get a bit more on anyway after doing that do both sides you can go both ways. Some of these dry off quite quickly, so uh, make sure it remains a bit wet. I can turn it over, do the other side. And then I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic bath. After pre-cleaning the records with the little toothbrush, you can put them straight in to the ultrasonic. You don't dry them off or anything. Normally I'd only put one for maximum cleaning or two, uh, but I put three in at the moment this time. Um, set the temperature to uh, 40 degrees centigrade and the timer at least 30 minutes, even longer if you want, because uh, you can go away. You don't have to stay with it and come back. Just remember, only about a third of the records in the tank at any one time. So at 30 minutes, any one part of the records are going to spend about 10 minutes in the bath. So we leave them running, and the slow rotation doesn't have to be quick. Uh, one rep per minute or less is fine. Okay, this is a record that hasn't been cleaned. Uh, you can hear the crackling any second. So there's a lot of cracking on this record. Uh, going to put it through the cleaning cycle, uh, pre-cleaning it with uh, some vinyl uh, cleaner and the uh, small brush, and put it in a heated ultrasonic for 30 minutes at 40 degrees C, and then we we'll recheck it. Okay, after cleaning and um, the ultrasonic bath. background noise is almost totally gone almost totally gone the background noise just a couple of tiny little ticks which if you put it through the bath again probably go so um, cleaning as I've shown uh, works very very well and um, the best result I've had from 
all sorts of methods of cleaning. So in conclusion, I fully recommend uh, an old sonic cleaner for cleaning up records, especially if you've got lots of um, old records from the 60s, 70s, or you bought some rare record off eBay that has got a lot of background noise. It really, really gets rid of it, all the crackles and reduces all the noise down. How to make the uh, cheap old sonic cleaning setup uh, just with a um, couple of bits of pieces, motor, a couple of bits of all cheap uh, water, and um, a little bit of uh, additive for the vinyl wetting and a bit if you want to pre clean the record. It's all very cheap, and um, I've been uh, very pleased with the outcome.